Hello and welcome to study Introduction to General Linguistic. I'm Sajivani Priyangika Ventikol. Topic 3. Structure of Words. The learning outcome will be, uh, will describe morphemes in complex words and also distinguish the uh, derivation from inflectional affixes and also discuss allomorphisms and allomorph conditional conduct simple morphological analysis. So when it comes to the introduction, uh, we will look uh, at types of words as parts of speech and also the internal uh, structure of words and also the uh, internal structure of complex words. And uh, when it comes to type of words, the different types of words, we can classify words uh, based on the function uh, they play in the language. I mean, like uh, some words are content words and they carry lexical meaning. And also the other, uh, other are function words and they carry only grammatical meaning. So when it comes to lexical words, uh, lexical words are also called content words. I mean, lexical words can be categorized into uh, different parts of speech, such as nouns, uh, verbs, adjectives, and adverbs. So nouns uh, are words that describe a person, an object, a place, or a situation. For instance, sister, father, chair, pencil, canteen, school, cafe. Uh, abstract concepts such as poverty, democracy are also nouns. When it comes to proper nouns, it's names of people such as Peter, John and Siti. And uh, if you take names of places, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Bandagara, such as words are words, verbs are words that denote action, state and events such as write, explain, construct, eat, sleep and pretend. So when it comes to adjectives, adjectives are words that describe the property of nouns. For instance, happy, true, honest. Also adjectives as they can be used to describe the property of a person or a situation. He is a happy boy. The statement is true. You should try to be honest to yourself as well. Adverbs are words that describe adjectives, other adverbs and verbs. For instance, very, extremely, slightly, slowly and quickly. Uh, if you talk about functional words, functional words are words uh, that do grammatical work in the language. Uh, for instance, uh, pronouns such as I, you, we and they. And if you take prepositions such as above, below, and between uh, conjunctions such as uh, and, but, because, when. Unlike lexical words, uh, which are open close words, function words are close uh, class words. You can easily add the new lexical word in the language, but rarely add the function word. Uh, when you come to function words, are also categorized into different parts of speech. I mean, it's depending on the function of these words in the language. So let us have a look uh, of examples of pronouns, determiners, prepositions, and conjunctions. When it comes to pronouns, uh, pronouns are function words that can be used to substitute or stand in for nouns. Person and I'll possessive pronouns in English can be organized into paradigms. First person pronouns refers to the speaker or speakers. Second pronouns are parties that are addressed in the conversation. Third person are the parties uh, that the speaker refer to. So when you look at the uh, table, personal pronouns and possessive pronouns, in it, you can see that first person, the subject, IV, you can take the second person and you, the third person is he, she, they. And the object first person you can take me and us. In the second person you can say yours. The third person you can say him, her or them. So when it comes to possessive, I mean first person you can say mine and ours. Second person you can say ours. Third person you can say his, hers and theirs. 
So when it comes to indefinite pronouns such as someone, anybody, somebody, nobody, uh, anything, everybody, something, everything and nothing you can take as. And also when it comes to the demonstrative pronoun, this, that, these and those. And interrogative pronouns such as who, what, when, uh, whose, where, why and how much. Determiners are function of verbs that proceed in the noun. For instance, you can take uh, a and an. These are indefinite articles and of course the you can take it as the definite article. Prepositions are function verbs that show grammatical meaning in relation to the time and space. You can say in, on, above and below. Uh, or such as you can say in the box. You can say on the table, you can say above the table, and you can say also below the table, likewise. Conjunctions uh, comes like conjunctions are also function words uh, they, that can be used to join phrases or utterances, such as coordinating conjunctions, you use ad and but, and subordinative conjunctions while, because, and when. Morphemes free and bound. A morpheme is a minimal unit of meaning. Uh, if you take uh, the words happy, uh, you cannot be you cannot broken down that uh, any smaller unit of meaning. Uh, have uh, if you take hap, it does not have any meaning. Neither do, if you take uh, I mean uh, p, even it doesn't have any meaning. So we say happy is a monophonic word since it has only one unit of meaning and one, one, one morpheme and the morpheme is a free morpheme. Derivation and inflection affixes and clitics. So the internal structure is fairly straight, straightforward. The word happy consists of only one morpheme. The word unhappy has two morphemes. The word is uh, formed by adding the prefix unto the free morpheme happy. So happy is the root word. So when it comes uh, affixes like uh, there are two types derivational affixes and inflectional affixes. So if you talk about the derivational affixes, uh, derivational affixes are the bound uh, uh, counterparts of lexical words and uh, prefixes of uh, resulting in no change to the lexical category. Uh, suffix, suffixation of uh, result in a change of lexical category. So if you look at this table, this is English derivational morphemes. Uh, I think it's good if you can read it louder. Try to read on your own. Okay, so you can see that word formation rules and also you can, they have given you some examples here. You can see that. Okay, so you can say un when it comes unhappy or unreal, dis disappear or dis dislocate. If you take un, you can say it's undo or untie. And when you take re, you can say redo, retake, revisit, revisit kind of. And of course, adjective plus any SS a noun, happiness, creativeness. A verb plus a b l you can say believable reliable uh, uh, doable such as adjectives plus adverbs which you can say this quickly or slowly and uh, noun when it comes adjectives magical uh, personal national likewise adjective plus e n a verb which is brighten lighten and sweeten verb plus i v adjective it's creative and active uh, please uh, read this table so you get uh, more ideas. So, inflectional affixes and clitics. Inflectional affixes are the bound counterparts of function words. Most function words are free morphemes. So, when you look at this table, you can see English inflections and clitics. Inflection morphemes, are bound morpheme and examples. If you take the first one plural, it's at S like pens, daisies, watchers and sheep and third person agreement is writers, sieves, catchers. Past tense you say picked, robbed and waited and present participle ing driving, writing and painting and past participle wanted, confused and selected 
and comparatives such as bigger, smaller, tighter, superlative with EST you use biggest and the smallest and tight, tightest, possessive as splitting John the Childs. Allomorphs. Allomorphs are the different surface forms of a single phenom. Allomorphs for plural noun in English. Just look at this table. Allomorph, single noun, plural noun. It's zero morpheme, sheep. It's plural also sheep. With S you say pen, pens. Allophon is daisy, daisies. This is ES, is watch, watchers. N, you say ox, oxen. Please uh, try to read this. I mean, uh, then you can improve. So, when you come to the zero morpheme, refers to no change in the phenological form of a plural noun, of the plural noun. So, just look at this table. Allomorph for past tense verb in English. Allomorph, root verb, past tense. This is zero morpheme. When you take cut, it's the past tense cut. Superlative forms, when you take go, it's the went. And ed, picked, picked. And rubbed, rubbed. Wait, waited. Play, played. So I think uh, you got uh, some knowledge about uh, how to structure, uh, how like uh, knowledge of structure of words. And uh, I think it's better if you can read this uh, content uh, for you to get uh, more uh, knowledge. And uh, hope you enjoy the lessons with me. And thank you.